So much has been accomplished. But NASA, hobbled by cumbrous uh, limitations, has been unable to articulate a master plan that excites the imagination and provides a semblance of predictability to the aerospace industry. We will have no American access to, nor return from, low Earth orbit and the International Space Station for an unpredictable time in the future. However, today we are on a path of decay. We are seeing the book close on five decades of accomplishment as the leader in human space exploration. As unimaginable as it seems, we have now come full circle and ceded our leadership role in space back to the same country, albeit by a different name, that spurred our challenge five decades ago. There are two attributes that are necessary for the implementation of a human spaceflight program. First, the program must be managed responsibly with a balance between infusion of new technology and a sensible risk and cost profile. Unfortunately, NASA's advanced technology work has been cut back and it's not clear how the agency will be able to unfold new technologies without a more concentrated effort to develop them. Off-the-shelf technology will not meet all future needs and significant advances will be required if costs are to be managed. Second, a balanced program of science and technology is necessary. The thought that it's possible to cut out major parts of an industry or a scientific enterprise and that people will return at some undefined point in the future is unsound. The central issue to be decided by our nation's leaders at this time is simply this. Do we want to have a real space program or not? Based upon our behavior lately, I believe that most people would be forced to conclude that the answer is not. What is a real space program? Well, let's return to NASA's chartering legislation, the Space Act of 1958. In that seminal work, we find, among other things, that, quote, the aeronautical and space activities of the United States shall be conducted so as to contribute materially to the preservation of the role of the United States as a leader in aeronautical and space science and technology and in the application thereof, end quote. Now today, the United States is dependent upon a foreign power for the most important of those applications, human spaceflight, and our recovery plan, if that's the word for it, is to depend upon certain companies which have yet to show that they can deliver the laundry to the International Space Station, never mind the crew that would wear it. We need an administration that believes in and understands the importance of America's commitment to regaining its preeminence in space. An administration which provides us with a leader who will once again be bold, just as JFK was, and challenge our people to do what history has now told us is possible. The top three goals should be to first maintain a leadership position in space, the second to guarantee access to space, to and from space, and third, uh, to have an exploration focus in that order. Yes, sir, I'm, a, you know, I'm an exploration guy at heart. Uh, after having the opportunity to go to the moon twice, staying home is not good enough for me, but I'm a realist also. We will go to the moon and back to the moon, and we will go on to Mars, not as quickly or soon as I had hoped, but to me, it, it, the direction is more important than the time of when we go. I think our most crucial concern at this point in time is the ability just to get back in the lower Earth orbit. We have a hundred billion dollar investment up there and a commitment to our international partners that we cannot keep today because we have given up the capability in the shuttle with nothing to replace it at this point in time. Now, the SLS is great. I just hope that there's a derivative of the SLS that allows us to get humans, Americans, back in space prior to 2018 or 2020.